everybody, I'm Simon Harris and welcome to the latest episode of the vlog. So firstly, it's May 25th, so I wanted to say to you, happy GDPR day. Um, hopefully your campaigns are uh, delivering. Hopefully they're spending on more than one ad exchange. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think it's worth pointing out there's lots and lots of people who are um, not bored with GDPR, but have, um, have uh, just been overexposed to it. It's probably a good way of putting uh, it. And I kind of wanted to, to deal with that in today's vlog. Um, I didn't want to talk about GDPR specifically, so I'm not going to. What I'm going to look at is uh, two or three really interesting uh, news articles that I've seen in the last week that have kind of been buried underneath all of this GDPR stuff. And there was some really, really interesting stuff happening in the last week. So let's get right into it now. So one of the biggest stories of the week that wasn't GDPR related was uh, consulting giants Accenture's foray into uh, programmatic media buying. Um, they've set up a programmatic buying division. Um, and that's really interesting news. Um, Accenture have been involved uh, in programmatic previously, like obviously they are a very large and very well respected uh, consultancy division. They do offer clients uh, consultancy on bringing programmatic buying in house. They also uh, offer clients consultancy around selecting the right technology. Um, they also have acquired creative services previously. Um, so to lots of people, the kind of foray into media buying seems very logical. Um, and are very new and um, you know I think the potential upside for Accenture is very very obvious um, I think it remains to be seen um, you know whether or not they can um, bring the same rigor that they uh, do to consulting in other areas to media buying they've got lots of smart people so you know potentially they can um, I thought what was interesting around the kind of uh, talk and the press release and the uh, news articles that pertain to this uh, news um, was the, the talk around uh, the actual model itself. So, you know, Accenture talking about um, transparency and uh, offering their services on an FTE as being one of the uh, drivers that would make this uh, uh, attractive to clients. They were talking about it in the context of it being an innovation and um, you know lots of what they're doing is seems very logical to me but certainly positioning uh, things like delivering services on an FTE certainly didn't feel like an innovation but you know that said I wish them well. Um, you know I think um, you know the media agencies of the world have a, a leg up in, in certain areas and Accenture, you know, offer lots of really interesting uh, services as well. So it'll be, be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, someone actually asked me when they saw the news, they were like, you know, you've run pr big programmatic operations before, what do you think some of Accenture's challenges will be? And actually, I don't think they'll be too dissimilar to, to large holding companies. I think a lot of it will be, um, you know, can they... Uh, hire and retain the the best people and the you know people who are already very very good in this area most of whom um, currently work in in holding companies whether that's you know WPP or Omnicom or Havas or Publicis or Dentsu um, can't forget IPG media brands so I think the, uh, the the finding the right people and retaining those people will be their biggest challenge but as I said it'll be certainly interesting to see how this pans out. Okay, so another really interesting development uh, this week came from Publicis. Uh, Publicis announced their new AI tool uh, called Marcel. Uh, now Marcel, uh, there's very little known about it at this uh, point in time, but it was built in development with Microsoft and it's said to be similar to a Siri or a Cortana or a Google Assistant or Alexa for that matter. Um, and it's basically an assistive AI. Um, the AI itself is said to hold the details of publicists, uh, 80,000 employees go globally, hopefully they're all opted in and consented. Uh, couldn't resist a GDPR joke, but um, it basically uh, also stores um, briefs. So it has records of employees and uh, client briefs, and it uses AI to decide uh, which employees would be the best fit for a particular live brief, and it'll assign those employees uh, to the client brief. Um, it's said that they've used it on uh, Walmart already to some success. Um, as I said, the details are very scant, so it's really hard for me to say whether or not you know um, that's true or not. I'm sure it is. Um, 
but it's definitely an interesting development and um, it's what AI experts would call weak AI and that's not me being disparaging about it. Strong AI will ultimately uh, replace people in organisations. Weak AI is generally seen as being assistive and that's what Marcel is. Um, I think it's an interesting development. I'm sure we'll see more of this assistive technology um, at lots of different holding companies and uh, businesses elsewhere uh, over the coming uh, months and years. So certainly uh, interesting news and uh, one to watch for the future. Okay guys, that's it from me for now. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this episode of the vlog and you haven't done so already on YouTube, please hit subscribe. Who knows, one day maybe Google will let me monetize the channel. Um, don't forget to kind of like or comment on LinkedIn if you're watching it there. One of the things I really, really enjoyed about the debate on GDPR was there was so much dialogue around the subject itself and there were lots of people uh, disagreeing with me and that's totally cool actually. Diverse opinions, uh, always appreciated, always welcome. So if you disagree with me on any of this stuff, let me know in the comments section. Um, I hope all of your campaigns continue to deliver throughout the day and I hope that uh, any GDPR related challenges that you are experiencing kind of don't bleed in your long weekend. Enjoy the extra time off work if you get to uh, have some and yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.